I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the News Du Jour, a calmer space to consume the news. So the cicadas are, they're giving us some late summer vibes, okay? That's that's what's happening with the cicadas. I don't know how they can be this aggressive, and yet, here we are. Anywho, we have four stories for you guys today. That's a lot, so let's just jump right in. First up, Trump trial has a date set. So Trump's trial in D.C., which is on the subject of January 6th and the insurrection, will start on March 4th. So they kind of claimed that date that Fonnie T. Willis had initially thrown out for the Georgia trial. But that's okay because it looks like she is now trying for freaking October as we covered last week, which is insane. But it's interesting that they both did hone in on March 4th, seeing as that date is obviously very important for Trump and the Republican Party as a whole, because it's the day before the Republican primaries Super Tuesday, where 15 different states will be voting. Trump's team had asked to push the trial to 2026. (laughs) So obviously that request was definitely shot down. You know, they're having it in 2024, two years earlier than he wanted to be doing it. His trial in Florida is slated to begin in late May. Over in Georgia, though, they have the issue of just too many cooks in the kitchen. Remember, the Georgia case has 18 defendants, and that has led to a lot of bickering about when and where this trial should take place. Because people have all different motivations and timelines for these 18, you know, sort of simultaneous cases. Each person is coming at it with a totally different angle. Some are even trying to have the case moved into a federal court. But this would not affect, just to be clear, would not affect Trump's inability to pardon himself because these charges would still be at the state level, even if they were heard in a federal court, but it would affect the jury pool. It would basically cause the jury to be pulled from the state overall entirely, and they'd have to cover the whole state. So it would make the jury slant a little bit more rural. And we know statistics show rural areas are Trump loving areas. So this might benefit Trump's camp, which are these people who are indicted. A judge heard this argument yesterday and the judge is in the process of making a decision. This type of move is known as removal. So if you hear someone talking about removal in Trump's case in Georgia, they were referring to moving it into a federal court. Got to make sure you guys are up on that legal lingo. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them via DM about anything, but definitely about this issue because I know it is very nuanced. There's a lot of details in each case and there's a lot going on. So I'm happy to break down any aspects that are confusing to you guys. And I also last week covered the question from a listener. Why are all these cases coming out at the same time? I feel like that's a really common question because it feels almost conspiratorial, but I know that each case has its own reasoning for coming out when it did. And so what I do in that episode is just walk you through each case and what took so long in certain cases. And then in other cases, they moved very quickly. And I explain why each one ended up at the pace that it did. 
So for our next story today, I do have to issue a content warning. This story involves racially motivated murders. So we do have a piece of, or a few pieces, of new information about the racially motivated shooting in Jacksonville, Florida. We have a little bit better picture of this gunman who committed this violent act. Ryan Christopher Palameter, age 21, had been on police's radar since 2017 when he was held for an involuntary 72-hour mental evaluation. He was only 15 years old at that time, which is insane. It's kind of hard to do a 72 hour hold no matter what, but on someone who is legally a child, I mean, he must have been doing some pretty dramatic things in order for police to make that decision to commit him against his will. The police had also been called more recently this year about a domestic violence incident between Ryan and his brother. While we don't know the details of that situation, there's a number of states in the U.S. where if you have an incident of domestic violence, you cannot get a gun. If you have mental health issues, you cannot get a gun. But the laws in Florida, they still allowed this person to get a gun legally. And right there is the problem, folks. These violent deaths were so easily preventable. We know what leads to, we know the recipe, (laughs) right? We know the recipe that leads to violent acts like this at this point. And arming these people or allowing them to arm themselves is so incredibly dangerous. And we've just seen it over and over again. Again, these deaths were so preventable and my heart is broken because of it. So for our next story, I want to shift gears and let's chat about Simone Biles. You guys, the world doesn't come crashing down when you take a break. People will still be there to cheer you on after your break. You can still win championships after a break. You won't ruin or even diminish your legacy by taking a break. Even in a sport that relies on a limber, youthful body, Simone Biles has now proven that for everyone to see. This story really gives me chills, you guys. I think Simone has done more for sports generally than set new records. She has set a new tone and a new pace and put emphasis on really important things. Sports culture is often found preaching that you should push through the pain, mental or physical, that now is all you have, that you have to muscle through it. And Simone said, you know what? That's not for me. And she went her own way and she may have potentially saved lives or definitely improved lives by demonstrating that you can take a breather and come right back to claim your crown. And that is exactly what Simone has done. She took a two-year break, but this week she has come back to win an eighth U.S. all-around title, and she is the oldest gymnast ever to do so. Sounds like her body benefited from that break because after she was seen fumbling her routines at the Tokyo Olympics back in 2021, it was clear that pushing through wasn't working for her. I think our bodies do incredible things when we treat them right and when we listen to their cues. Welcome back to the reigning queen. And for our next story, Idalia. So tropical storm Idalia is hurtling towards Florida and creating unlikely political alliances. Ron DeSantis and President Biden have hopped on the phone to prep for this oncoming storm. Obviously, DeSantis is an outspoken critic of Biden as he is running against him for president, but the two know that their political futures depend on how they handle major events such as natural disasters, so they have no choice but to join forces, play nice, and get the job done for the people of Florida. 
Biden freed up federal resources for DeSantis ahead of time, bracing for the worst and deploying FEMA personnel to the state. The White House said DeSantis will have Biden's full support through the course of the storm, through both the prep and the aftermath. Idalia looks like she will become a Category 3 storm, bringing with her the usual. Heavy rains, high winds, floods, and storm surge. She is expected to make landfall on the panhandle of Florida as early as today. We'll definitely keep you guys posted on her. Stay tuned. And that is the news du jour. One more note on Simone Biles and the process of taking a break. I don't know if you guys know this already, but our number one day of this podcast show, the day the most listens happened ever, was the day that I came back from maternity leave. And I can't tell you how many people told me, ooh, you know, are people still going to be there when you get back from maternity leave or kind of suggested that I might lose my following in that process. I knew I didn't have a choice but to take a break. You know, when you have a baby, you have to. It's it's not optional. But the fact that you guys were all here right after that break, excited to listen again, and that I set a new record for daily downloads, I mean, that says it all. I think sometimes we are even better off taking a break and come back so much stronger. So today I wanted to leave you a quote by Simone Biles, and she said, quote, being a gymnast means having the strength to hold on and the courage to let go. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review or shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us be able to keep creating the news du jour. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar-free media. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram and just sugarfree media, all one word on TikTok. Any little noises you may hear in the background are my rescue pup. He has a little separation anxiety and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh.